Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Brownback session. Today, we welcome Günther Bronner. He is CEO at the company Umwelt Data, and he is a specialist in monitoring and map mapping of forest resources. Today, he will be talking about novel technologies of forest assessment that were presented at the Sylvie Laser Conference in the year 2021. We ask him the question, what is the benefit of point clouds from terrestrial laser scanning for the assessment of forest ecosystems? Günther, thank you very much for joining our Brownback session today. May I hand over the word to you now? Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation and giving me the opportunity to present a little bit of our inventory, forest inventory work with laser scanning. So I uh, will start sharing my screen uh, about the, the forest point clouds. Um, and their usage for forest assessment. So it's not only terrestrial laser scanning, it's also aerial laser scanning, and uh, they are kind of complementary technologies. Uh, you can see here a point cloud from aerial laser scanning with uh, quite a high resolution. It, this is uh, uh, a resolution that can be achieved from air airplanes, but also from UAV, and it allows a single tree segmentation. Uh, this is the details you get from terrestrial laser scanning, where you can measure uh, the trees very accurately, the diameters and the height and so on, and the structure, um, as you can see here. Uh, in general, the aerial laser scanning has a better representation on the canopy side and the terrestrial laser scanning has a better representation of the stems near the ground and but uh, you can still see the treetops with less points and you can use the terrestrial laser scanning for calibrating uh, the aerial laser scanning um, because uh, terrestrial laser scanning you can do only on some selected sample plots and aerial laser scanning you could do wall-to-wall -wall coverage of a whole project area. So what I'm talking to you is part of a project funded by the Austrian uh, um, Funding uh, Association, FFG, and uh, these are the partners of in the project. And um, yeah, in the meanwhile, it's not any more experimental. We use it in operational inventory. Um, if if you're going to to digitize the forest, I would propose uh, digitizing the forest could be a contribution to save the biotopes on the planet because uh, the transparency you can achieve is a good precaution against illegal logging. And uh, the, also the DLS sample plots allow a precise measurement of the tree property uh, and the carbon contents and the biodiversity. Um, you have time series that allow precise uh, measurement of carbon segregation, and you can use the, as I already told, the TLS sample plots to calibrate the wall-to-wall -wall coverage of ALS point clouds. And these wall-to-wall -wall point clouds can then be used for a detailed map, and the map can be used for any kind of management. And uh, regarding the density in the airborne point clouds, if you have 50 points per square meters or more, uh, that would allow a single tree segmentation, even in broadleaf 
conditions, in deciduous conditions. So um, the instrument we are using for TLS is looking like this one from, it's an Austrian instrument. Uh, I think the most accurate uh, that can be um, obtained. Um, we, we use it in an upright position and we use it also in a tilted position depending on the circumstances and the uh, yeah the if if we want to catch more from the treetops we have to use it tilted like this and if you, you uh, look at the sample design uh, in in the forest you can with approximately 10 to 15 scan positions you can capture a sample plot radius of 20 to 25 meters depending on the density of the forest and uh, the scanner is quite fast so the total scanning time is just 15 minutes for such uh, a, a sample plot and uh, for those who are familiar with the uh, the details of, of scan recordings. Uh, in this case, we take a scan resolution of 550 milli-degree. So it's uh, one degree is uh, split into uh, 20 scan points in every uh, uh, direction. So it's quite a dense. Uh, a dense point cloud you obtain. And in the second step, you have to co-register the sample uh, plots, the, the, the scan positions, which are marked here in blue color. And then you end up in a valid point cloud. And if you have uh, such a point cloud, you can start segmenting this point cloud again into single trees, and you can start to measure the tree height, for example, uh, you have here the statistics with comparison measurements, with manual measurements. You can be sure that the heights from TLS are even more accurate than in manual measurement. And this is uh, the measured DPH, where the manual measurement is more accurate than the height measurement. So it's a nice line, these uh, statistics, and you have the volume, which is uh, has a, a higher standard deviation because the tree crowns are different uh, and the form factors are different. So you can also uh, assume that the TLS measurement is more accurate than the manual measurement in this case. Um, if you derive a diameter from the point cloud, it can look like this. You do something like a cylinder fitting to obtain um, uh, something like a cylinder for the stem. And then you have on the, on the left-hand image, you can see the diameters up the stem. So you don't get only uh, the diameter in 130, uh, the DPH, the usual, but you can get a lot of diameters. And yeah, you can start with the modeling. You can, uh, here you have a point cloud and you have some cylinder model. The QSM is the quantitative structure model used for such cases. There are different approaches and they all would end up in a above ground biomass and in a carbon contents. You can look at the biodiversity and the diversity of the different trees. If you seg segment the trees in a, a very detailed way, you can look at uh, the uh, dead wood lying on, on the ground. And yeah, you can model the tree competition like this with some areas uh, from the single trees. And 
the the main thing is if you digitize the forest with a scanner you freeze the actual state so uh, the from from time to time the the feature extraction gets better and better they are using neural networks and uh, so on it's it's starting but you have frozen your actual state and even if uh, the 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 methods become better you can um, apply them on the already frozen digital twins so even if you want to walk through this dance with in virtual reality you can do this later on and you have frozen your actual state and in this way the whole monitoring process becomes transparent and can repeat it and can be trained and so on. Yeah, uh, the sequence is a little bit uh, mixed up. And yeah, and you can do this freezing with time series and then go to the different states of the forest and measure the, the changes. So the silver laser benchmark is still on the way. We did a lot of scanning in last September, and we now have collected all the point clouds and harmonized all the point clouds. They are available for the community to perform the different uh, kinds of feature extraction. Here is an impression of the silver laser site for the, from the benchmark. Maybe we do a repetition one year from now. Here is uh, an image from the drone uh, benchmark with some very nice <laughs> drones and their sensors. Uh, here is uh, just uh, some images from this benchmark for you, the Wax 120 from Regal with a very uh, high resolution. You can measure the diameters even from above canopy flights. Here, another system on a backpack uh, scanner, the GeoSlam, and the re results coming from this system. And as I told, the feature extraction challenge is starting now as we have collected all uh, the point clouds from the different systems and georeference them and uh, provide the manually measured reference data. Uh, the details can be seen at the Silver Laser homepage. Uh, yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening and I would stop my presentation and maybe show another slide, one or the other, if it is necessary for answering a question. Will ensure nature conservation in the 21st century. Be part of the new four semester part-time master program. Carinthia University of Applied Sciences.